In this lecture, I'll show you how to use the delay node. It's a very useful node. It actually does two things. It both allows you to delay a message, input and output, by an arbitrary amount of time, but also to limit the rate of messages that are passing through it, which is very useful if you want to connect your flow to some external resource on the cloud, for example, a uh, Google spreadsheet. Those services typically introduce limits to how many messages they can receive, and if you exceed them, then you're uh, locked out, or at least you are limited by the imposed rate limit. So you can then use the delay node to uh, ensure that your flow does not bombard an external service with too many messages. So let's have a look at this in practice. Here I've got a trigger that just sends out a timestamp and I've got a debug node to show us the exact timestamp at the moment when I trigger it. And then the timestamp trigger will also start the delay node. So I've got five seconds delay. And after five seconds, the delayed message debug node will fire and show us the payload five seconds later. So let's try this out. I'm looking at the current flow. I'm going to trigger the inject node. And there you go, five seconds later, the same payload is led through by the delay node. So you can see it here. Another thing that is interesting is this. Let's say uh, that I generate multiple timestamps within a small amount of time just by clicking on the button here multiple times. It looks like this. So you can see that I've got a fairly high uh, a rate of messages being produced. And all those are delayed by five seconds and eventually they do appear just five seconds delayed. Now, what I can do instead is I can say that I want to limit the rate of those messages and I want to drop any intermediate messages so that only one message per second is actually able to pass through. So let's see what the effect of this is. I'm going to do multiple clicks on this button to simulate a high rate of messages passing through the flow. And notice what happens in the output in the delayed message debug node. Okay, so I've got a bunch of raw messages here. You see the first delayed message did come through and then I've got a bunch of uh, raw messages until another message came through. But these messages, you can see the timestamps should be about a, uh, a second apart. So 38, 38 seconds, and then we've got 39 seconds, instead of having multiple messages coming through to match the rate by which I was clicking on the button here. To exaggerate a little bit more, I'm gonna make this a little bigger, five seconds. So one message per five seconds, and it drops the intermediate messages. So those are totally lost for good and deploy that and clean up. And I'm going to do a few consecutive clicks on the timestamp node. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning. Here's a first delayed message at 39, 34 minutes. Uh, so 39 minute and 34 seconds. And the next one, so the important number here is 34. The next one, it's right here, 39. Exactly five seconds later, we have uh, a single message coming out of the delayed message. So we will be using the delay node in our project later on.